Okay, here we are on part two. And what we're going to cover now is just the basics of mitosis, the different phases, uh, what they do, how you can remember them, uh, and then we'll finish off with, with an exam question you can work on to, for the remainder of the spell. Okay. So how do little elephants grow to be big elephants? And uh, why do animals uh, shed their skin? So these are the two questions that you need to ask yourself. And the answer is you get to that later. So the process of asexual reproduction begins after sperm fertilizes an egg. So it happens straight away. And this process of asexual reproduction is called, as I believe Caitlin said, mitosis. Right. So, there are three reasons why cells reproduce asexually. By mitotic division, there's growth, turning a little animal, such as an elephant, into a big animal. Repair. Or replacement. So the example we've got here is a, a skin cancer and that's abnormal growth of skin cells. That's all cancer is, are cells that don't stop growing. So they just continually to, to divide by mitosis. So although it can be a good thing, it does it too much, it's a bad thing. Okay. So these are the phases we have uh, within a cell. I believe Liesel referred to them last time. So we have interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and a phase that Liesel didn't mention, I don't believe, is cytokinesis. But that's nothing too ridiculous. So again, remember interphase prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Now, uh, the acronym uh, IPMAT, IPMAT, oh uh, yeah, I don't know, I'm trying to think of an acronym to help you remember it, but there's no good ones so far. IPMAT is good enough, it just sounds a little weird. Right, beginning with interphase. It occurs before mitosis begins. There are three phases within interphase. There's a GAP1 phase, there's a G1 phase, the synthesis phase, and the GAP2 phase. Um, the interphase is where the cell spends most of its life and it's not replicating, it's just going through the normal metabolic reactions it needs to do to sustain life um, and then and that's in gap 1 phase and in the S phase, the synthesis phase this is where the chromosomes are copied and doubled and that's normally when we can uh, start to see the chromosomes under a microscope so as it says here each chromosome and its copy sister chromosome change to be called uh, sister chromatids at the end of this phase. So you start off with a single chromosome, they're copied, so you've got a pair of chromosomes, but at that stage it's now called sister chromatids. Right. Clear as mud. So here is a photograph of an animal cell and a plant cell and in interphase, as I said, not a lot goes on in interphase um, in the G1 phase you have the normal meta metabolic reactions of life um, but then you do have the synthesis of chromosomes so the DNA gets a little, uh, sorry, the nucleus gets a little denser and that's what we can see happening here
Alexis, uh, get off Facebook. Next we have prophase. So mitosis begins during this phase. It's step one in mitosis. The cell begins to divide. Centrioles, if you remember from level two. Uh, organelles responsible for cell division. They move to either end of the cell and the spindle fiber, fibers uh, form between the poles. So this happens in prophase. So here is an animal cell and a plant cell. Uh, again you can't see a lot although it does appear that the chromosomes are beginning to um, organize themselves for the lack of a better term. But remember all you need to know for prophase is it's the first stage in mitosis. Uh, the cell begins to divide, the centrioles move to the pole and the spindle fibers form between the poles. Uh, metaphase is the next phase, and the chromatids, or pair of uh, chromosomes, attached to the spindle fibers. And what they do is they line up sort of along the equator or, or along the middle of the cell in preparation to be separated. So at either end of the cell, you have the centrioles, uh, then you have the spindle fibers connecting to the chromatids or pair of chromosomes. Um, at a point called the centromere. All right, so here is a picture of a plant and animal cell in metaphase. So in the animal cell, you can see the, per the small purple lines, which are the spindle fibers. You can see the thick purple line up the middle, which is um, all the chromosomes lining up in preparation to be separated. In the plant cell. You can't really see the spindle fibers very well, but you can see the chromosomes lining up along the equator very well. So that is a metaphase for a plant and animal cell. And all you need to remember is the chromatids or pair of chromosomes attached to the spindle fibers and line up along the equator. That's metaphase. So, our awesome acronym IPMAT, interphase, prophase, MAT, metaphase, next we have A, which is anaphase. Good job. So, this is the third step in mitosis. Chromatids, or pair of chromosomes, separate and begin to move to opposite ends of the cell. Um, So as in, as in metaphase, the centrioles are at the, at the end, uh, this phase, the chromosomes are no longer lined up along the equator. They begin to separate and move to either pole of the cell and they start to form the new sister nuclei, the two new nuclei needed um, for this asexual reproduction. So here's an example of anaphase. So as you can see, the, in the animal cell the chromosomes are no longer lined up in the middle. They're starting moving to the sides and you can see two distinct nuclei. Uh, and the same in the plant cell. So that's anaphase. You have to, all you have to remember is anaphase, they begin to separate. Telophase. So this is where the two new nuclei form. Chromosomes no longer appear as chromatin, uh, so they, but they appear as sort of thinner threads rather than rods. So I've got to sort of motor through this so the video isn't too long and YouTube doesn't decline me again. Um, as you can see here in the animal cell, you've got two clear, distinct uh, nuclei and even again in the plant cell. So that's telophase. 
the two new nuclei are formed uh, and that's really all you need to remember and finally we have cytokinesis and this is where the cell membrane moves inwards to create two new daughter cells or the, or the cell membrane sort of pinches off um, and each with its own set of identical DNA, identical chromosomes. And that is mitosis. So we have animal mitosis interphase, uh, is where the DNA is replicated. Prophase, the centrioles move to the poles and the spindle fibers begin to form. Metaphase, the spindle fibers attach to the chroma, the to the pairs of chromosomes and the chromosomes line up along the equator of the cell anaphase they begin to separate telophase uh, the two new nuclei are distinctly formed then we have cytokinesis and what we have there is two new sister cells back in interphase now for a plant cell this is the same so we have interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and then we have two sister cells in interphase. But with the plant cell, we have one more step where the cell wall is formed between the new sister cells, which is not needed in an animal cell, as we all know. They don't have plant walls. So here's an acronym. Here's a way to help you remember. I pray more at the church. I interphase, pray, prophase, more, metaphase, at, anaphase, the, telophase, church, cytokinesis. I just did that with my eyes closed. No big deal. Um, and here we have a cell cycle. So we have interphase, the majority of the cell's life. Um, prophase, the centrioles move to the poles, metaphase, the chromosomes line up along the equator, anaphase, that means to separate, telophase, two new distinct nuclei, and cytokinesis, two new distinct daughter cells. Okay, I'm really motoring, because I don't want YouTube to decline me. So, here's an exam question that you can work on for the remainder of the spell. When DNA is re replicated, each of the parent strands acts as a template. Uh, explain why there is a difference in the way in which the DNA strands are replicated. Right. So, be good. Don't talk too much. And be good. See you on Monday.